Would you all please rise, remove your hats, and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by Thomas Jingris. Before I get started, I just want to say, Tom, where are you? You knocked it out of the park. Absolutely fantastic. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our class day ceremony as we celebrate the graduating class of 2022. Please give them a round of applause. On behalf of the faculty and staff, I want to congratulate all of our soon-to-be graduates sitting before me for all of your achievements over the past four years here at Gardner Area High School. All of you have found your way to overcome many, many challenges that few other graduating classes have encountered, and you've found success, and that's why you are sitting before me. Congratulations. I also want to say thank you and 
recognize all of our family members and friends who are joining us here this morning for all of the love and support that you've given this class uh, throughout not only their four years here at Gardner High School, uh, but mostly their 13 years through MSAD 11. Without your support, uh, that would make it a much more challenging endeavor. So please give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you for all you do. Thank you to our sponsors of this year's scholarships and awards uh, that we'll be giving out. Uh, we gave out a few the other night at Academic Awards. Uh, we'll be giving out some today and some at graduation on Saturday night. Your kindness, generosity, and support of our students is very much appreciated. For those of you, for those scholarship sponsors that are here, I would ask that you please stand and be recognized. I think we have a few here with us this morning. I want to take this opportunity to recognize my administrative assistants, Melissa Gregoire, Christina Riddle, Diane Lane, and Jamie Klukey, for all of the work that they have put into organizing today's program. It's been a very busy springtime here at Gardner High School, and I am so very fortunate to have such a talented and dedicated group of people to work with every day. Thank you to all four of you. I want to say thank you to Ms. Hopkins, our Superintendent of Schools, and Ms. Hardy, our Director of Curriculum, for joining us today. Ms. Hopkins is off to my left, and Ms. Hardy is joining me here on stage, keeping me company. So thank you very much for being here this morning. I want to thank my faculty and my staff for all of the time and dedication hard work and perseverance that you've put into working with this class. Uh, your support I know is appreciated by all of them uh, and they will remember all of the good times that they had with you and I want to thank you for all that you do for our students and a special thank you to Miss Levitt. Miss Levitt, where are you? Miss Levitt up back is come out of retirement. I pulled her out of the bullpen uh, to come in and help with the marching practice uh, to get us looking as sharp as, as we did this morning and for graduation. So thank you, Ms. Levitt, for volunteering your time to work with us. And finally, I want to recognize three of our faculty members who will be moving on to other adventures at the end of this school year. Uh, I'm not sure if they're all here because we have some folks that are up with study halls, but I'd like to call up so they can be recognized briefly. Dina McQuarrie, Maureen Cloutier, and Matt Colvin. Just a, a little side note, I had to call him up because I know Ms. McQuarrie, uh, this is not her favorite thing to do. So we're gonna stretch her a little bit this morning and make a little bit of a, a positive spectacle out of this group. <laughs> On behalf of the faculty and staff, past and present, students, MSAD 11, thank you for your years of service to MSAD 11. Gardner Area High School, and most importantly, your dedication to the thousands of students you've worked with over the years. We wish you all the best in your future endeavors. You will all certainly be missed here at GHS. Thank you.
Our first speaker for this morning is Jada Williams, and Jada will be making the address to faculty. So to start this off, I would like to use a quote from the one and only Amber Dosty. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm sitting on my yacht, I start to think about the middle passage. <laughs> now, can I use an analogy? As Mr. Wing would put it, this year has been like riding on a yacht towards the future and crashing frequently. Just like Mrs. Backus, as the list of kids she believed would get a five on the AP test shortened as she got to know us. Or Mrs. Jingris when we turned her classroom into a health class while reading Frankenstein. I really do adore every single faculty member here that I have met. I didn't expect coming to high school that I would love every single teacher I've had but everyone has been extremely nice, even if some of the projects and homework made me want to die a little inside. Latin Miss Collins has for sure seen me at my highest and lowest, yet still manages to somehow cheer me up by telling the class that we are the reason she will never have children. Love you, Miss Collins. <laughs> Mr. Harris has dealt with us only surviving AP, well, AP biology from his awesome comic that he should totally finish and send us, just saying. Not to mention Mrs. Benedict, a literal goddess walking amongst us, Miss Brooker, who is the main reason I survived high school, Mr. Averill, whose fashion sense has admittedly gotten a little bit better, <laughs> and the wonderful humans and guidance who I love with my whole heart. Now, I told myself I wouldn't cry, joke's on me, um, but I know myself well enough that I'm writing this into my speech. From the cafeteria ladies, the janitorial staff, and other faculty members in the building who aren't necessarily leading a classroom, to the teachers we all know and love, I just want to thank you for all that you do. Without you, the school would quite literally not be able to function, and we students would be deprived of all the opportunities you amazing people have given us. I am so happy that I was able to connect with so many of you throughout my time here, and I will miss you all dearly. On behalf of the class of 2022, thank you. Our next speaker for this morning is Leah Pouchard, and Leah will be making the address to buildings and grounds. Hello, fellow friends, students, teachers, staff members, parents, family, and the class of 2022. I stand here today looking back on the memories we have experienced on the grounds of the school, past and present. These are the grounds that past family members have roamed on, and maybe even our future generations will as well. These halls are filled with memories and reminders from past classes as well as ours. According to the high school's 1924 edition of the Quill, Gardner High School was one of the finest up-to-date high schools in the state. There was a brand new gym along one of the state's finest athletic fields at that time. Quimby Field, as it is known, had an amazing football field, two baseball di diamonds, two tennis courts, a jumping pit, and other space for field events. Back then, everyone thought those updates were so pristine, and it was for that time. But now, 100 years later, our senior class has been able to experience the newest updates to the grounds over the time that we have spent here. t Wind was built around 30 years ago with air conditioning, unlike the hot, sweaty sea wind that we get to experience during the humid summer months. We also got a new gym, like the class from 1924, but not for the reasons you may think. We didn't get a new gym just for kicks. Instead, a big main storm decided to collapse a roof in and cause all kinds of damage. So they finally thought it was time to do some updates after that whole incident. But the biggest highlight of this year was the long-awaited turf field. With the huge logos that take up half of the field, many of us athletes often get asked, don't these logos distract you by other teams during the middle of games? Because they are obviously not used to the 20 different colors that are on there. 
but hey, a turf field is a turf field. But all these new updates don't compare to the memories we have made in and around this building. On step up day, we walked into the front doors and saw just how large the high school was compared to the middle school. But now it does not seem all that big to us. To our right, there is the office where our favorite office ladies are, Diane and Mrs. Riddle, along with the principal's offices that I bet a few of us have been in. Heading out of the office, there is Seawin, where all the English language and history experts are. It is also the hottest wind in the building during the summer, therefore making it the smelliest and the stuffiest, as we all know. Right by Seawin, there is also the library, where many have studied, taken a nap, gotten help from one of the librarians, hung out with friends, or gossiped with Mrs. Wheelock. Next, there is Tewin, where the math and science teachers are. This is everyone's favorite rent, win because it is like a breath of fresh air. But there are some downsides to Tewin because in the winter, it feels like we always have the air conditioned on and not the heat. There's no happy medium to the temperature anywhere in the school. It is either too hot or too cold. But we live in Maine, so I guess we are all used to it. Then there is the cafeteria. It is a place where kids eat, do homework, hang with friends, gossip about who is dating who, and all the other fun stuff that happens in high school. The cafeteria is also the place where rumors spread like wildfire, as well as the bathrooms where large groups gather. Many kids this year decided to bring new air fresheners to spice up the bathrooms. They smell so fruity when you walk in, it is almost like you are walking into a cloud of smoke. There have also been not-so-kind words exchanged in the bathrooms, which we all know where those tend to lead. Kids also performed non-academic activities in the bathrooms by taking necessary thins from the toilets and the walls. This became a TikTok trend called Devious Licks, which many students participated in, but that whole trend just seemed to blow over at this point. The bathrooms have now gone back to normal thanks to the custodial staff. Without them, our school would not be as clean as it looks. Next, you make your way down to the catwalk where you enter the gym, where we are today. This is where we got to experience pep rallies that we missed out on these last couple years because of COVID. COVID screwed up a big portion of our high school days. We missed out on a lot of activities that we could have experienced as a class. But I'm thankful that we at least got to experience somewhat of a normal year, one that other classes couldn't. This brings me to the best part of our journey throughout high school, the athletic fields. The field hockey, football, baseball, softball, lacrosse, track, and soccer fields, as well as the basketball and tennis courts, brought the most happiness to a big portion of us. It is where we have created bonds with our teammates, some of whom now feel like family. It is where we have lost games and won games, and most importantly, where we had our senior nights. There is nothing like putting blood, sweat, and tears into a sport that you care so deeply for. Some of us even got to play on the long-awaited turf field that we patiently waited two years for. Many senior athletes here are so thankful to have gotten the opportunity to use it. But despite all the bad things that have happened in the world through our high school career, we have still made the best memories here on these grounds. There will always be reminders that our senior class was here, from the burnouts in the parking lots to the missing necessities in the bathrooms. But most of all, the bonds we made with teachers and each other will forever be on the fields and throughout the halls. So thank you to the building and the surrounding grounds, because without them, we would not have the lifelong memories we have made here. Memories which we will cherish and long to come back to in our adult lives. But hey, we did it. We made it to the end despite all the challenges we have faced. It was a long four years, but it also flew by so fast. Too fast, in my opinion. So as we all go off in separate directions after graduation, I have one thing to say. To the class of 2022, thank you all for the amazing memories we have shared. They will forever be with us. Thank you. Next, I'd ask the members of the high school chorus to join the group. We have some senior soon to be graduates going to join the group over to the left for the singing of House at Pooh Corner.
Our next speaker for this morning is Sky Cotnoir, and Sky will be making the address to undergraduates. Good morning. Um, all right. The address to the underclassmen. Soliciting unwarranted advice to peers that I have walked the halls with for the past year. That came off a little bit cynical, but as I sat down to write this speech, I wondered what qualifications I had to be addressing you all. So, I asked some friends what advice they would want to give, or rather just what they would want to tell the underclassmen. The answers I received varied in subject matter. For example, walk on the right side of the hallway, don't make out in the hallway, don't vape in the bathrooms, and to quote, please shower. <laughs> now, this is all great advice, but I feel like administration would want something a little more constructive. From where I'm standing right now, I look back on four years of my life spent in one building, and 13 years of my life spent with some of my classmates, and an entire world of possibilities ahead of us. Now, that sounds super cheesy, I know, but it's true. So I will go into the advice part by saying that these are just a few of the things that I've learned that might be helpful to you. March of 2020, sophomore year came to a screeching halt and all activities were canceled. During that time, I felt as though there was no purpose to life and I struggled to find the passion and drive to do even the most mundane of tasks. Coming out of lockdown junior and senior year, I had to reignite that flame and it seemed a lot harder to do that. Those around me were feeling the exact same sense of burnout and lack of motivation. Although it was difficult, I was able to participate in all of the activities that really brought me joy and was able to look critically at what I spent my time on and what was worth my time. For some, quarantine made it difficult to reignite those passions that were seemingly lost. Life is meaningless unless we seek out the meaning I encourage everyone to find the meaning again, meaning again and enjoy the rest of the time that you spend in this building. Buy into every cheesy coach pep talk, listen to every story your teachers tell you, sing and play out confidently, and put your phone down every once in a while to talk to the person in the halls you see walking alone. The next lesson that I've learned and I would like to emphasize, there is no correct timeline or pathway. You have your own timeline that will lead you to your purpose in life, and that timeline is different than those around you. When you become a senior, you will be expected to make a choice about the coming years of your life. This choice is daunting, and personally, I didn't spend enough time considering and preparing for it, until I realized that the decision I make now can change. And although it might be scary, you have the power to make this decision now and to change your mind in five years later if you want to. I encourage you to be empowered by this. It is amazing to think that you can make any choice that you would like, whatever will make you happy, whether that be college, the workforce, a trade school, the military, or traveling. You have earned the right to fulfill your desires and dreams after accomplishing the feat of graduating high school. The last lesson that I learned is the most expected, and I struggled with how to word this so that it doesn't sound like every other underclassman address. Don't wish away the present. The Dalai Lama says, there are only two days in the year that nothing can be done. One is called yesterday, and the other is called tomorrow. So today is the right day to love, believe, do, and mostly live. I believe that every senior here today will tell you that high school went by so much faster than we ever expected. Senior year becomes so exciting with the thought of endless opportunities in our future but sometimes I forgot to soak in the present moment. Then I blinked, and now I'm speaking to you all here today. So soak in every family dinner, every sports game, and every pep rally. And don't forget to compliment someone every once in a while. Don't forget to introduce yourself to the new kid. And tell your teacher to have a nice weekend. I didn't think I would get emotional, but here we are. Um, so yeah. Um, you get one high school experience to make a lasting impression and create the foundation for the adult that you will become. So I encourage you to take advantage of the present moment. Looking back at the last four years of my life, I'm proud of the growth that I have experienced through the adversity of the world. And my one wish for those of you looking up at us at sitting in these seats, 
I said that totally wrong. <laughs> My one wish for those of you looking up at us graduating this year is that you have the same feeling when you sit in these seats. So for now, Thank you to everyone who has supported me in my class. I know we appreciate it more than you know. To the underclassmen, find your passion and stick with it. Take the time to figure out your timeline and choose that path because that's the correct one. And live in the present moment. Please also walk on the right side of the hallway. Don't do too much PDA and practice personal hygiene. Thank you. Our final speaker for this morning is Grace Milligan, who will be doing the class history. When I think of class history in the class of 2022, I am brought back to elementary school. At Helen Thompson, we played Wolf Quest and Some Dog in every free minute we had. Kickball and hiding under the turtle filled our recesses with laughter despite the many injuries that came with them. While an LER being able to go down the big playground once we reached second grade was a big deal, but we quickly learned not to go down the silver, silver, silver metal slide on hot sunny days. At Riverview, we would play competitive games of Foursquare every recess, sometimes with the horses and donkeys that escaped the nearby farm. Racing to the broken car in the woods, also known as the Bloody Mary car, we would make up stories, claiming to have seen something, someone. And Moon Pie the Cat was always a friendly visit. While in Pittston, we played kickball and tetherball during our recesses. We were so competitive and rough with each other that Red Rover got banned. At TC Hamlin, we enjoyed playing Infection, also known as Tag. The nearby graveyard allowed for many stories to be told especially the graffiti written by the ghosts who haunted the school. For all schools, the Olympics was something to look forward to. Splitting up into different colors, we would participate in competitive activities, such as relay races, potato sack races, spirit weekdays, and a few more to get points for our own team. An assembly was held at the end of the week, and we all waited anxiously for the announcement of the winning team. We soon graduated fifth grade, many of us excited to grow up. We entered middle school and found our people, our friends who we may still be connected with today. We looked forward to the days when the middle wall between two classrooms would be pushed back and we would all watch a movie for the day. We learned archery, how to ride a bike, how to rock climb, and most of us learned how to rollerblade without breaking anything. The eighth grade dinner dance consisted of awkward middle schoolers all standing around in a circle, putting their arm in the air here and there as a way of dancing. And in seventh grade, many of us had the privilege of meeting Gabby Stetzner. Gabby lit up every room she walked in and never failed to make those around her smile. She faced the hardest life challenges with such strength and determination, and she has inspired many people in this room. Despite moving across the country at the end of freshman year, a few of us maintained our close friendship with her. We lost our sweet Gab last summer from her long fight of childhood cancer, but her love remains strong and she will be remembered forever. Middle school came to a close and we graduated for the second time, preparing to enter high school. Many of us couldn't wait to be one of the big kids. We entered through the doors during step-up day, ready for everything to come, ready for the next step in our lives. Our brand new MacBook Airs got traded in for Chromebooks as we entered the high school, which was a nice upgrade, you could call it. During the last 10 minutes of our freshman midterms, the fire alarm went off, and we all got to escape from our next final. It wasn't until after that it was confirmed that a kid sat down and unknowingly, with their backpack, pulled the alarm. Many of us remember the pep rallies that, that were held that year and how much fun that brought to our class. Fast forward to junior year when we had a surprise visit from some cute dogs. Um, thank you to the class of 2022 for all the memories we have created. 
Although we may not have a lot as a class these past four years, the ones we do have never fail to make us smile. Now here we are, just two days away from our third graduation. We've all watched each other grow into the people we are today. Many of us have been with each other since kindergarten, and whether or not we were best friends or just a face in the hallway, we've done these past 12 years together. So as we take the next step in our lives, whether they be college, trade school, military, or the workforce, be proud of all the accomplishments that got you here today. Thank you for being there for each other as a class of 2022. I can't wait to walk the stage with you all in a little over 48 hours. Until then, thank you. At this time, I would ask uh, Mr. Colvin, Piper Coleman Veet, and Brett Palmer to please come up to the stage to do the inauguration of the 22 23 Student Council Presidents. Congratulations to the class of 2022. Before we swear in our next uh, co-presidents for next year, I'd just like to say that uh, back in 1997, when a former ad administrator that worked here named Paul Knoll asked me to be student council advisor, I was very leery about taking that job on. But over the past 25 years, I've had nothing but good luck and these two standing beside me are a perfect example of the outstanding individuals I've had the opportunity to work with in that time. So at this time, I'm gonna allow them to swear in the next uh, co-presidents. That's something they decided to do a couple years ago. Let's have co-presidents. If it works, hey, why not, right? So at this time, I'll let them fight over who will call up our next two candidates. So, could we please have Dana Vassal and Lily Matos come right up? Swear you in. Okay. So, right hand up. Please repeat after us. Okay. I solemnly pledge. I solemnly pledge that I will carry out to the best of my ability. That I will carry out to the best of my ability. All of the duties and responsibilities. All of the duties and responsibilities. As co-presidents of Gardner Area High School Student Council. As co-presidents of Gardner High School Student President. <laughs> I fully understand and accept the purpose of this position. I fully understand and accept the purpose of this position. And I will conduct myself. And I will conduct myself. So that I shall reflect. So that I shall reflect. Honor upon the organization. Honor upon the organization. And will maintain high standards. And will maintain high standards. In my school and private activities. In my school and private activities. Congrats. Okay. Brett and Piper, you for, did you forget to tell them that they had a speech? 
Dana, you have a speech? No? Oh, I'm just joking. I know that if they get up here, they would knock it out of the park as well. Two fantastic selections for next year's co-presidents. It is now my honor to recognize the top 10 students for the class of 2022. And we've got a little bit of medallia up here to add to your um, regalia for graduation. Some of you, I, I think I outdate myself, but those of you that remember uh, the TV show SWAT with uh, Mr. T, some of our folks uh, will end up looking like Mr. T with all of the regalia that they have earned over the course of four years. And this is just one additional way for us to recognize the outstanding achievement of these uh, great young men and women. So I'll start with number 10 and work our way up to our val uh, salutatorian and valedictorian. I'd ask them to come up to the stage and please remain on the stage just to be recognized. Lorelei Mason. <laughs> Megan Ladner. Isaac Dosty, <laughs> Piper Coleman Veet, Grace Milliken. Jada Williams. Sky Cottonoir. Leah Pushard. Salutatorian, Ava Garay. <laughs> Valedictorian, Brett Palmer. Please give this group a round of applause. I think they wanted to take over. No? no. Ava? You sure? No, okay. Hip hip, all right? Next, I want to recognize our students uh, for their performance up at the Capital Area Technical Center. Um, as all of you know, we are one of eight sending schools that send students uh, up to the Vocational Center. And year in and year out, our folks do a fantastic job, uh, not only in their programs, but uh, if you wanted to compare their performance to other schools, uh, we are very competitive in the arts and trades uh, that they learn up there. So we have several recipients uh, of scholarships, and I'd like to recognize these folks, uh, even though they were recognized up at the Vocational Center. So uh, when I call your name, please stand to be recognized and remain standing until I call off all the names. 
Emma Baker. Emma is a recipient of the Culinary Arts Activity Fund Scholarship in the amount of $500 and also the g and &E Roofing Culinary Scholarship. <laughs> Tim Eshelman. <laughs> Tim in the amount, excuse me, in the amount of $250, and this is the Auto Mechanics Scholarship. <laughs> Joe Ellis, the Electrical Technology Tool Award. <laughs> Zach Puzel. This is in the amount of $500, and it's the Culinary Arts Tool Award. And Connor Whitley. Connor received a $100 scholarship for the Instructor's Choice Activity Account Tool Award for Plumbing and Heating, and also the Town Fair Tire Foundation Toolship Award in the amount of $500. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations to all of you. Job well done. Several years ago, we started recognizing um, our top scholars uh, using the Latin honor system uh, that is used in at pretty much all colleges across the country. Uh, and this has three tiers, uh, cum laude, which uh, the recipients have to earn a GPA of 90 to 92.99. There are 16 students in this category. The next level is magna cum laude, and students need to earn a 93 to 96.99. We have 15 students to recognize, and the top level is summa cum laude and students need to earn a 97 or above cumulative GPA. We have 13 students in that category. If I could have Ms. Perey come up and please help me with the awarding of the tassels. I will do the cum laude recipients first. Sean Doyle. Grace Deering, Alexander Grover, Connor Whitley, Ella Lindley, Madison Johnson, Braden Derogi, Frank Albert. Isabella Card. Adam Mitchell. Liberty Crockett. Leah Hustis. <laughs> I 
Anita Goulet. Gabrielle Riggin. Madison Peasley. Owen Wallace. <laughs> Moving on to magna cum laude. Again, this is 93 to 96.99. Elena Blyer. Kennedy Burdett. Luke Lawrence. Thomas Jengris. Jade Ellsmore. Samuel Arsenal. <laughs> Peregrine Bolduc Ignasiak. <laughs> Brianna Soyette. Ryan Bannister. <laughs> Sophia Blanchard. <laughs> Katrina Blakowski. Dakota Rideout. Emma Baker. Juliana Montel. Timothy Eshelman. And the final group, summa cum laude, grade point average of, <laughs> gotta do the handshake. Grade point average of 97 or above. Brett Palmer. <laughs> Ava Garay. Leah Pouchard. Sky Cottonoir. Jada Williams. Grace Milliken. <laughs> Piper Coleman V. <laughs> Isaac Dosty. <laughs> Megan Ladner. Lorelai Mason. <laughs> Madeline Barden.
Natalie Fawcett. Emily Folsom. I will say that these are based on the first seven semesters, because uh, that is all that we have in the bank right now. So at the end of the year, when we close out grades, if there are any additional graduating seniors that reach that plateau of 90 or better, uh, we will certainly be recognizing you in the best way possible. So um, finish strong. I know that you guys have all got your exams in, uh, but as soon as we finish up grades, if you have jumped up to any of these honors and awards, we will certainly recognize you for those as best we can. Congratulations to all of you. Next, I would ask uh, Christina Benedict to please come up to the stage. And Brian Henderson, you might as well come up with her. One of our latest tag team duos. That's right. Hey, good morning, class of 2022. You did it, and I wish you great joy and happiness in the years ahead. Thank you for all the memories you've left here with us. My first honor this morning is to acknowledge a young woman who is extraordinary in a lot of ways. Uh, in this particular acknowledgement, it's because she has been working hard for four years on our civil rights team. She has been an officer for the last two of those years. She has worked tirelessly to make everyone feel valued and important and like they belong here in our school community. It is with great pride and not a little whimsicality here that I acknowledge the amazing Ms. Jada Williams. Now I'd like to ask Mr. Henderson to join me, uh, a Drama Club alum who is now my co-director. So I'm gonna speak on behalf of the both of us for just a moment. We're gonna acknowledge a few young people who took the time in the past few weeks of craziness, becoming seniors who are actually graduating and getting those caps and gowns and all of that. They still submitted essays for a Drama Club scholarship. Now this year, scholarships are being acknowledged just by students standing up right where they are, uh, and you will get your money to you. But Brian and I are so proud and happy to think that these people, despite performances without audiences, despite being in masks, despite live streaming headaches at times with COVID getting in the way, still managed to put out eight incredible plays during their time in high school. So we had four people who are recipients of this year's Drama Club Scholarship, and those are in the amount of $300, thanks to the tireless efforts of our drama boosters, our Gardner Drama Boosters. We'd like to acknowledge Jada Williams. Please stand. Zandra Malinowski. Eden Layton. and Brett Palmer. We love you all, thank you. Next I would ask Mr. David Walker to please come up to do the announcement of the Ellen Blodgett Award and the Zilpha Potter Award. Good morning and congratulations to the class of 2022. I know you're ready to get on with Saturday's event, but uh, really soak in all of these activities over the next few days and 
enjoy them to their fullest because um, you'll remember them for a very long time. The Ellen Blodgett Music Award is presented each year to a senior music student who has shown outstanding dedication to the music department, musical achievement, and shows promise for the future. This year's award is presented to an individual who fits this description perfectly. To say this student shows promise for the future would be a great understatement. This individual has been a member of our band all four years at the high school and has meant so much to the music program here in Gardner. The student is a talented musician and a very dedicated and hardworking individual who is one of those silent leaders who leads by example. This person has made the band better because of their leadership, their dedication, and their work ethic. On top of this, this year's recipient is one of the nicest people you'll meet. They are, they are a friend to everyone and always have a smile on their face and a friendly hello. It's hard to imagine the student not being part of the music program next year. At the same time, we are better and the music department is a better because the student has shared their talents, dedication, leadership, and love for music. There will definitely be something missing next year without this person in the band, and especially when I look to the flute section. It's with great pride and pleasure that I present this award to Piper Coleman Beat. The Zilpha Potter Music Award is presented annually to a graduating senior in recognition of outstanding musical achievement and dedication throughout their years at Gardner High School. This recipient has all of those qualities. The student is an outstanding musician and has worked hard over the years to mature into the musician that they are today. Music is an important part of this student's life and has been for many years. This year's recipient has been an integral member of our instrumental program participating in the band and jazz ensemble. It's been a pleasure and an honor to have been part of many amazing and memorable performances that this musician has been part of over the years. This year's recipient makes the musicians around them better as they share their amazing work ethic, energy, positive attitude, and dedication towards music. We're going to miss this person next year in the music department. The student has definitely made their mark here in the music world and at Gardner High School as a whole. And I know they will continue to do the same in everything they are part of as they step out into the, quote, real world. I am honored and proud to present this award to an amazing young lady and musician. This year's award goes to Renata Montel. At this time, I would ask Susan Folsom, one of our illustrious guidance counselors, to please come up and do a make a presentation for the Presidential Scholar Recognition. Thank you, boss. Good morning, Gardner. Congratulations, class of 2022. Uh, the entire counseling office is thrilled for you and wishes you the absolute best. The U.S. Presidential Scholars Program was established in 1964 by executive order of the President to recognize and honor some of our nation's most distinguished graduating high school students. Each year, up to 161 students in the country are named in, as U.S. Presidential Scholars arguably the nation's highest honor for high school seniors. The selection of approximately 4,000 candidates is based on SAT and ACT scores. These students are invited to complete a detailed application and write an essay. Candidate schools complete seven essay prompts about the student's academic achievement, personal characteristics, 
leadership, and service activities. Approximately 650 candidates are named semifinalists. There were only six semifinalists in the entire state of Maine. The National Commission on Presidential Scholars then reviews the 650 and limits the final group of academics to 121. One male and one female from Maine have been awarded as Presidential Scholars due to their demonstrated leadership, scholarship, character, commitment to high ideals, and contributions to school and community. We have one of the two. It should be of no surprise to anyone who knows him that out of 3.7 million seniors in the country, Brett Palmer is the one. Yeah. Congratulations, Brett, for this ridiculously amazing honor. Okay, I'm going to ask Brett to raise this medal because this will be the only time I'm guessing that I will ever see this medal live. The odds are totally, he is like 0.0047% right here. Show that medal. <laughs> you are a pleasure. Thank you. Next, I would like to ask uh, Ms. Jen Boudreau and Ms. Rita Tran to please come up and do a couple National Honor Society awards. Good morning and congratulations, class of 2022. The National Honor Society would like to recognize the following seniors who have demonstrated exemplary leadership and dedication with an award of $200 each. Would the following seniors please come up to the stage to Mrs. Tran to receive their award. Jada Williams. Brett Palmer. <laughs> Peregrine Boldek Ignisiak. and Samuel Arsenal. If I would ask uh, Ms. Prey to come up and join me to help me with handing out the Distinguished Community Service Awards. Uh, this award is given to all seniors who graduate with a hundred or more hours of community service over the course of their four years. And you can see from the stack that we have a lot of community service going on in the senior class, um, which given the past four years is a special testament to their dedication to their community and all the causes that they volunteer in. So first and foremost, congratulations to all of you. I will be starting 
with 100 hours and I'll be working my way up to the top and we'll kind of do a little bit of a rapid fire because there was a lot. Katrina Blackowski, 100 hours. <laughs> Owen Pouchard, 102 hours. <laughs> Braden DeRogi, 102 hours. <laughs> Natalie Fawcett, 106 hours. <laughs> Mackenzie Coran, 107 hours. Angelo Gallibois Mars, 107 and a half hours. <laughs> Peyton Stevens, 120 hours. <laughs> Jackson Boudreau, 120 hours. <laughs> Caitlin White, 121 hours. Liberty Crockett, 123 and a quarter hours. Gage Poor, 125 hours. Kyle Barlow, 127 and a half hours. Megan Prescott, 128 hours. Isabella Bickford, 128 hours. <laughs> Brianna Soyette, 132 hours. <laughs> Ms. Bray is asking if I need my glasses, and quite honestly, I do, but I didn't bring them. Either that or I've got to have Melissa make bigger font. Zandra Malinowski, 147 hours. Sky Cotton Noir, 166 hours. <laughs> Isabella Card, 168 hours. <laughs> Sean Doyle, 170 hours. Megan Ladner, 173 and three quarter hours. <laughs> Nicholas Sears, 190 hours. <laughs> Dakota Ryder, 191 hours. <laughs> Ronald Darville, 202 and a half hours. Aiden McCaslin, 205 and a half hours. <laughs> Samuel Arsenal, 223 and three quarter hours. <laughs> Angeli Meehan, 240 hours. <laughs> Madeline Barden, 256 and a quarter hours. Lorelai Mason, 314 hours. <laughs> Brett Palmer, 332 hours. <laughs> Ava Garay, 378 hours. <laughs> Isaac Dosti, 450 hours. Jada Williams, 523 and three quarter hours. <laughs> Colby Mayhew, 610 hours. <laughs> Piper Coleman Veet, 763 hours. <laughs> Renata Montel, 1196 hours. Luke Lawrence, 
1,200 and a half hours. Juliana Montel, 1,565 hours. Alana Layton, 2,042 and a half hours. And Peregrine Bolduck Ignatiak, 2,415 hours. Congratulations to all of you, and thank you for your service to your community. And at this time, I would ask Superintendent Hopkins to please come up and do a, in a presentation in recognition of our school board representative. Thank you, Mr. Kempton. And congratulations, class of 2022. You've certainly had a lot of hurdles thrown your way, but you've persevered. And I just can't wait to see you Saturday night up on the stage as um, I'm able to um, really have the privilege of giving you your diploma. So, so congratulations. Before I make my rec uh, recognition of a school board representative, um, Mr. Kempton kicked off this ceremony um, this morning by recognizing all that our staff and others have done to help put our students here today and allow them to be here. I'd like to take a moment just to thank Mr. Kempton. I don't know if you all know how much time he puts in to um, devoting his life to supporting every single student. I've had the privilege of working with many high school principals over my career, and Mr. Kempton just stands out at being exceptional. He goes above and beyond and truly does all he can to make sure every student who wants to walk across that stage is able to walk across that stage. So, Mr. Kempton, thank you. A number of years back, the school board decided um, that it really wanted to include the voice of the student body on the school board. And so we now have two students um, who represent the student body. We always have a junior who serves for two years, and then, um, of course, they turn into um, being a graduating senior. So this year, I would like to recognize um, Gwen Boldick Ignaziak, who has served on the school board very successfully for the last two years and has done an amazing job representing the class of 2022. So Gwen. Each year I have the honor of giving out a principal's award and it is in the amount of a $500 scholarship and my recipient this year is a two-year member of our chapter of the National Honor Society and co-president his senior year. He's a four-year president, co-president of our student council, a four-year member of our Spanish club, math team, and drama club. He's a National Merit Scholar finalist and a 2022 United States Presidential Scholar. Guess who it is? and the valedictorian of his class. If that is not enough, he is an extremely talented artist, so much so that I've asked him for one of his paintings and I have it here on my phone. 
is just such an impressive talent that it just floors me. Also, he has dedicated countless hours of his time, his free time, to earning his black belt in karate. But most importantly to me, here we go. He's one of the nicest, kindest, most respectful, and most respected students that we have ever had here at Gardner High School in my 20 year, 24 years as tenure as an administrator. Equally as proud is that he will also be attending the University of Maine, my alma mater, in the fall where he'll be double majoring in computer science and new media. It is my pleasure to select Brett Palmer as my principal's award recipient. Right, now we get to give out some money. With these where they are so many, I'm going to ask you to please stand as I call your name and remain standing until um, we'll take a break. And I'm going to do 10 and have you be recognized, and then we'll do another round. So the first is the Barnstormers Snowmobile Scholarship in memory of Dewey Gray. This scholarship is awarded to a student furthering their education in the field of forestry, conservation, or other outdoor recreation careers is the amount of $250, and the recipient is Piper Lavoie. <laughs> the Boys and Girls Club of Kennebec Valley Scholarship is in the amount of $1,000. This year's recipient is Luke Lawrence. The Kathy Verhill Sperling Memorial Scholarship has four recipients this year, each in the amount of $1,000. The scholarship is awarded to an athlete who is pursuing a post-secondary education and who has demonstrated an exemplary work ethic, dedication to team, commitment to sport, and unselfish play. This year's recipients are Colby Vassell, Alexander Grover, Sean Doyle, and Leah Pouchard. The Class of 1953 Scholarship is in the amount of $1,000, and this scholarship is awarded to a student who is pursuing a post-secondary education. This year's recipient is Grace Milligan. The Class of 1968 Gift Award is in the amount of $500. This award is given to a student who has good, good academic standing and is involved with the school and community. This year's recipient, excuse me, in the amount of $500, is Juliana Montel. <laughs> the Class of 1974 Gift Award is in the amount of $250, and this award is given to a student who has good academic standing and involvement within the school and or community. This year's recipient is Lorelei Mason. The David Atkins Memorial Scholarship is in the amount of $250.
The scholarship is awarded to a softball player demonstrating leadership and commitment on and off the field. Again, this is a $250 scholarship, and it goes to Grace Daring. The Donald J. Simpson Scholarship in the amount of $100. This scholarship is awarded to a deserving football player as determined by the football coaches and athletic director. Again, this is the amount of $100, and the recipient is Ryan Bannister. The Forrest L. Wakefield Memorial Scholarship has two recipients this year, both in the amount of $300. This scholarship is awarded to a senior enrolled at an accredited post-secondary institution in Maine who has a GPA of 84 or better and who resides in West Gardner. The two recipients are Alex Grover and Grace Milliken. The Gail Santer Field Hockey Scholarship is in the amount of $500, and this scholarship is awarded to a deserving Gardner Area High School senior who participated in Gardner Area High School field hockey as a well-rounded and hard-working teammate. Again, this is in the amount of $500, and the recipient is Leah Pouchard. The Gardner All Sports Organization Scholarship has four recipients this year, each in the amount of $500. This scholarship is awarded to a student who has participated in sports at GHS, demonstrated good sportsmanship, and exhibited good citizen citizenship through community service. The four recipients are Luke Lawrence, Ryan Bannister, Sam Arsenal, and Megan Ladner. The Gardner Federal Credit Union Scholarship is in the amount of $750, and this scholarship is awarded to a student who is pursuing a post-secondary education and has been involved in school and community activities comes with a nice big certificate as well. This year's recipient is Luke Lawrence. I believe we have, we have a uh, new scholarship this year, and I believe we have family members here for the Scott H. Ellis Memorial Scholarship. Uh, do we have family members here? Are they, if you could please stand and be recognized, and then I will have the recipients come up um, and greet you and maybe take a picture. So the Scott H. Ellis Memorial was created following a tragic loss by the Farmingdale, Hollowell, Gardner communities, uh, and to the people who were and continue to be touched by his life. This scholarship is typically given to students at Halldale High School. However, Scott's family has chosen to present this year's award to three exceptional Gardner area high school students. Based on their athletic ability, sportsmanlike conduct, on and off the field, good character, showing a willingness, excuse me, showing a willingness to learn and is of good nature. This year's three recipients, each in the amount of $250, Leah Pouchard, Owen Pouchard, and Megan Ladner. You're welcome to go up. The George and Angela Hunt Memorial Scholarship 
is in the amount of $150, and this scholarship is awarded to a student who plans to attend a vocational program or community college. This year's recipient is Emily Henderson. The Herman Masonic Lodge No. 32 scholarship is in the amount of $500, and this scholarship is awarded to a student who has consistently demonstrated community acts of charity, faith, and betterment towards others. And I've seen the check in this envelope. This year's recipient is Sam Arsenal. The Isabella Harriman Trust Scholarship has two recipients this year. This scholarship is awarded to a deserving student to be used to defray the cost of further vocational education. Each of these are the, in the amount of $1,000. The two recipients are Evan Glidden and Emily Henderson. The James P. Brunette Memorial Scholarship is in the amount of $750, and this scholarship is awarded to a deserving student who is pursuing a post-secondary education and who embodies the characteristics most admired in and by Mr. Brunette. These are a strong work ethic, fair-mindedness, respect for peers and adults, and a willingness to accept challenges in life. This year's recipient is Sky Cottonoir. The Jessica Green Wise Scholarship has two recipients this year, each in the amount of $1,000. This scholarship is awarded to a student who has made changes in his or her approach to life's challenges, resulting in positive gains academically and or socially. One major benefit of being the recipient of this is that the scholarship sponsor asks for a picture with me to be sent to him. What a bonus. <laughs> this year's recipients are Elena Blyer and Luke Lawrence. <laughs> the John Irish Memorial Scholarship is in the amount of $300, and this scholarship is awarded to a student who best exemplifies John's qualities. The student should have a love for the outdoors, maintain good grades, and be a good friend with a wide variety of people. This year's recipient is Luke Lawrence. The next scholarship is the LVK Peter Townsend Scholarship, and there are two recipients this year, each in the amount of $500. Peter Townsend was an artist who, upon his retirement to Maine, requested that all proceeds from his work done in Maine be directed as a gift to a scholarship program related to literacy. The following students' poems had a profound impact on the committee readers and was considered exceptional. This year's recipients, Sam Arsenal and Brett Palmer. Margaret Bennett Memorial Scholarship is in the amount of $300 this year, and this scholarship is awarded to a student based on their commitment to the Gardner Public and or High School Library and or their role in furthering awareness of culture and society. This year's recipient is Thomas Jingris. The Mary Dyke Memorial Scholarship is in the amount of $100, and this scholarship is awarded to a student who is continuing their education at an accredited school. And I have to do this once, so I think it's nice. Hip hip hooray, it's Ava Garay. The Nahumkeg Fish and Game Scholarship has two recipients this year, 
each in the amount of $500. The scholarship is awarded to a Pittston senior planning to major in an environmental or natural resource discipline. The two recipients this year are Morgan Ambrose and Piper Lavoy. The Never Give Up Award, this scholarship is in the amount of $200, and this scholarship is awarded to a student who has worked through personal hardship and refused to give up. Amplify the never give up mentality and strive to succeed even during the toughest of times. This year's recipient is Emma Bourget. The Norman Ladner Senior Memorial Scholarship is in the amount of $250. This scholarship is awarded to a student who has participated in sports or extracurricular activities in high school, exhibited good citizenship, and been involved with the school community. This year's recipient is Megan Ladner. The Phyllis Deneen Memorial Scholarship is in the amount of $500, and this scholarship is awarded to a student who has sound character and determination to reach future educational goals. This year's recipient is Luke Lawrence. The Pittston Community Daughters Scholarship has two recipients this year, each in the amount of $200. And this scholarship is awarded to a Pittston student or students in good academic standing who are planning on continuing their education at an accredited institute. This year's recipients are Owen Pouchard and Leah Pouchard. The Pittston Firefighters Association Scholarship is in the amount of $300, and this scholarship is awarded to a Pittston student who is also a junior firefighter and is pursuing a post-secondary education. This year's recipient is Piper Lavoy. The Randall Lewis Memorial Scholarship is in the amount of $200. This scholarship is awarded to a student planning to major in education of youth-related services and has been involved in athletics. This year's recipient is Braden Derogi. The Rick Hersom Memorial Scholarship is in the amount of $500. Rick Hersom was a lifelong resident of, Gardner, of the Gardner area and believed in the transformative effect of athletics and community service in the development of young people. Rick himself could be found in the end zone of every home football game, cheering on his beloved Gardner Tigers, and was known as an influential leader in the area in national philanthropy through the Shriners organization. Again, this is in the amount of $500, and the recipient is Alex Grover. The Rennie's Charitable Foundation Scholarship has three recipients this year, each in the amount of $1,000. This scholarship is awarded to a student intending to pursue an education in business or business management. The three recipients are Emily Folsom, Owen Wallace, and Piper coleman V. The next scholarship is the Tabitha Jean Hembury Legacy Scholarship, and this has two recipients, each in the amount of $500.
But Tabitha Jean Hembry, excuse me, Tabitha Jean Hembry was a student at GHS who exhibited the following characteristics. Quiet leadership, behind the scenes, mentorship, kindness, and energetic spirit, advocating for peers and younger students, community service and school spirit. The recipient of this scholarship embodies these traits, and this scholarship is awarded for four years for a total of up to $2,000. The two recipients are Juliana Montel and Isaac Dosti. The Tabby Starlight Scholarship. Tabitha Jean Hembry was a student at GHS who exhibited, excuse me, the following characteristics. Uh, that I just said, but I'm going to repeat them again because it's worth saying. Quiet leadership behind the scenes, mentorship, kindness, and energetic spirit advocating for peers and younger students, community service, and school spirit. The recipient of this scholarship embodies these traits. It is in the amount of $250, and the recipient is Piper Coleman Veet. And the final scholarship for this ceremony is the Sunny Gamash Memorial Scholarship. It is in the amount of $500. And it is in honor of Sunny Gamash. This scholarship is awarded to a student at GHS, uh, excuse me, at a GHS senior with the highest number of community service hours showing a dedication to service. This year's recipient is Peregrine Bolduc Ignaziak. Before we transition to the senior slideshow, I would ask Isabella Card, please stand. Where are you? Bella? <laughs> About midway through the year, we've always had somebody take on the responsibility of creating the senior slideshow, which I think is probably one of the highlights of this event. Um, at that point, we did not have anybody, and then, lo and behold, Bella decided to step up. Little did she know what she was getting into. She has spent countless hours, most recently, she said, over the past week, roughly seven hours, just doing the final edits on this presentation that you are about to see. So I feel that it's very important on behalf of the class and everyone here to recognize Isabella for all of her extra work in making this happen. Thank you, Isabella. We're going to do a quick little transition. Is Ms. Clausen going to be the one that's doing the honors for Awkward pause. <laughs> Mr. Munzing. Do we have some confusion? Are you playing this or you just have the file? He's going to play it on his own. All right, so we have a little bit more of an awkward pause. Okay. So, um, we are going to get this ready and transition around, so uh, we're going to shut the lights off. I'm going to find a laptop that I can get this played up on. Bella, I need you one more time. Come on down and we'll see if we can get this up and running. Give us a couple minutes and we'll get ready for the slideshow.
I've taken possession of all the scholarships. I have all the flowers.
Okay, I think the dilemma has been averted. Thanks to Ms. Clausen, Greg, tech folks. Make sure that we can get sound.
Time. I met a girl of a different kind. We ruled the world. I thought I'd never lose her outside. We were so young. I think of her now and then. I still hear the song.
Okay, we'll be getting the class ready for the recessional. Uh, just want to give Isabella just another round of recognition. <laughs> Despite some technical difficulties, uh, we'll get that cleaned up, and I hope to have that playing uh, prior to graduation so we can see it up at the Civic Center while you're waiting for that ceremony to start. So uh, we'll try to make arrangements with the Civic Center so that's playing uh, prior to that ceremony. Uh, before we leave, just a reminder to the soon-to-be graduates, time to be here tomorrow is 8 a.m. We're going to be at the Civic Center from 9 to 10.30, and then... Graduation is when? At what time? All right, these guys are smart, I'm telling you. Okay, I think we're ready to, to march them out, Mr. Walker. Thank you to everyone for joining us this morning. It's always, you're always welcome to be here, and it's always nice to have you here in celebrating the class of 2022. So, with our class marshals, if you could lead us out.